While the descriptions of Joseph Smith's Urim and Thummim and breastplate do conform to the description of Aaron's breastplate of judgment, they do not preclude the possibility that additional Urim and Thummim and breastplates were produced. The church has not made a case to date for when these theoretical artifacts were made, or by whom, or for whom, so these questions remain. It is clear from the size of the breastplate and Urim and Thummim that they were not made for Joseph Smith. They were too large for the prophet. Besides, according to our chain of custody, the Urim and Thummim given to Joseph Smith by Moroni, which included the breastplate, was first acquired by Mosiah. Mosiah obtained them directly from God. God had gained possession of the Urim and Thummim of Aaron around the time Lehi and family left Jerusalem. These facts raise important questions. If God had Aaron's original Urim and Thummim and breastplate in his care at the time of Mosiah, and if Mosiah needed a Urim and Thummim for translation, then why wouldn't God simply give the king Aaron's set of interpreters? Why make another set when Aaron's was available? Of course, one might make the argument that Aaron's Urim and Thummim and breastplate were taken away by Nebuchadnezzar and destroyed. This would necessitate the making of a second set for Mosiah. But this ignores the fact that the Lord took great care to preserve the regalia and would not let them be destroyed. He made this clear with the episode of the plague of boils on the Philistines who had defiled the Ark of the Covenant. The Lord would never have permitted the Babylonians to take and destroy the Urim and Thummim and breastplate. He took possession of the interpreters and had them available for Mosiah when the need arose. The logic of the chain of custody and the physical descriptions of the breastplate and Urim and Thummim make a strong case for the claim that Joseph Smith's set was that of Aaron's. In other words, Aaron's breastplate and Urim and Thummim had been preserved from the Babylonian invasion, had been given to Mosiah, had been handed down through the generations of Nephite caretakers, and eventually was given to Joseph by Moroni. But there is more to support the claim than logic and circumstantial evidence. An eyewitness in a position to know the facts made the assertion that the Urim and Thummim and breastplate held by the storage room and used by Joseph Smith were indeed Aaron's. That eyewitness was Hiram Smith, Joseph Smith's brother and most intimate confidant. Hiram's testimony was recorded by William Horn Dame in his diary entry of 14 January 1855. Both the account of Lucy Mack Smith and that of William Smith point out that the breastplate of Joseph Smith, which we now know to be that of Aaron, was quite large. Lucy said that it fit a man of extraordinary size. William Smith, Joseph's brother, claimed that the breastplate and Urim and Thummim were too large for Joseph and must have been used by larger men. This is remarkable since Joseph Smith was a large man himself, as the St. Louis Gazette reported in May 1844. Joseph was reputed to be over six feet in height, weighing around 200 pounds. If the breastplate was made for men larger than Joseph, and indeed made for men of extraordinary size, then these men must have been much larger than the norm of modern man. We know from the biblical record that there were men of extraordinary size in ancient times, such as Goliath. There were even races of giants.
Og, king of Bashan, was one such giant. His bedstead, or sarcophagus, indicated his size and was remarkably large. Translating the number of cubits into feet, the bedstead measured 13 to 14 feet long and 6 feet wide. But neither Aaron or his successor Israelites, for whom the breastplate was made, were giants. When Israel faced the Anakim, a true race of giants, they were much smaller and seemed like grasshoppers in comparison. Still, Aaron must have been much larger than Joseph Smith, judging from the size of the breastplate. But how can this be? 